My question relates um, sort of towards your forward thinking, considering your company's strong track record um, and presence in the tech industry. Can you speak to how emerging technologies like generative AI and blockchain can be deployed not just for creating economic value, but also serve as a catalyst for systemic change, ensuring equitable access and representation within the tech industry and beyond? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, that is a big question. I'm going to answer some parts of it. Um, Gen AI is, again, going to impact every endpoint job. It is going to have a massive uh, disruptive influence on workflows on in the consumer side, for sure, the enterprise side, yeah, for sure as well. Um, and it's a question of how rapidly it evolves and what the ultimate impact is. And so as a business leader and a business manager, knowing that, you have to take that into account in the way that you are embracing that technology. I have the good fortune that our organization is of the size that we are top five customer for Amazon, Microsoft, and Google. So I get unique sets of access to resources for my portfolio companies to enable them to be first uh, in the industries that they're, they're, they're in to have Gen, Gen AI enabled products in those markets. That's critically important. If you're a small software company on your own, you're likely not getting the resources I'm getting, okay, to, to enable my companies to be more successful. Now, responsibility to the community, right? And you guys are going to hear about Gen AI biases and all that sort of stuff. And, you know, guess what? That's true. Okay, because who's building the models? How are they trained? What's the substrate on which they're being trained? And so with my teams, I say, okay, how, what can we do about this? Again, you only have influence on what you have control over in some respects. So we've now done two uh, hackathons with these partners, you know, Google, Amazon, um, uh, uh, Microsoft. And in those, we invited students from HBCUs to participate in those hackathons. Two of them, I think, were winners of, of two of the, of, the, uh, of the winning teams. But that's an important part of opening that aperture. Uh, we also use one of my company's stats perform. So if you're getting, consuming any data on sports, you're likely getting it from our company stats perform. Uh, so if you're watching on, you know, Yahoo or, you know, ABC Sports or whatever, that's what this, the thing is telling you about triple, how many triple doubles and all that. So that's, it's, that's the biggest re sports repository of data in the world. Gen AI relies on data. And data just naturally artisans out of enterprise software systems. Anyway, my CEO from that company called me and said, Robert, I've got a great idea. Why don't we build a curriculum uh, around Gen AI and introduce it into HBCUs. I'm like, that's a great idea. He decided to pick Morehouse first. I agreed, but we'll come here next. No, I got to go to Spelman next, but not come here. So um, yeah, we'll hold you to that. Only we'll because I got, you know, everybody were yelling at me yesterday to Spelman. <laughs> Why are you doing it more? Anyway, that's all the country. But uh, uh, but that is what I call your responsibility to create the on ramps on the platforms that that you. Are, uh, have influence over. You know, another friend of mine runs a big part of the platform at Google, and I said, there's a lot of, so, you know, friends, associates that run VC firms for African American companies, many of them are consumer products based, that don't have access to any of, the, any of these Gen AI cap capabilities. So I said, and I'll talk to Ruth about it, I said, you need to now get Google and Microsoft and others to, to now give you some unique capacity so that these companies have now access to these tools um, to enable their businesses to be successful. But again, that's part of, again, the responsibility of being a community member yes. in that context. Yes. Thank you.